guys it's taylor so today i wanted to film a really really special video that i have and i basically just want to tell you guys 21 things i learned before i turned 21 and i'm actually filming this the day before my birthday but the day you'll be watching it is my birthday so i'm 21 years old which is so exciting and I've seen a few YouTubers do this video and I think that it's so special and just so cool to see, you know, everyone's from different places and what they've learned and how they've grown up is so different. So I just wanted to share with you guys 21 things that I learned before I turned 21. Okay, so I bought this journal recently and I've been writing in it so much. I bought it right before I came back from LA and I just write anything in it to do lists, um, like inspirational quotes that I have and just any thoughts or anything that I'm going through. I just found it's really great just to write things down and it's kind of cool to look back and see, you know, the different experiences you've had just because, especially this summer has to be the best summer of my life and i'm so grateful that i got to go to la and you know my family is so amazing my parents were sending me there that was just the greatest gift ever so i just want to be able to look back so i just bought this little journal and um yeah let's get started okay number one this is something that i've thought about so much um especially this summer i've really thought about this is life is short life is so short god forbid i could die tomorrow um you know knock on wood but what i think about it is you know life is so short you know buy the concert tickets eat the dessert you know um hang out with your friends you know tell all right sorry if the angle changed a little bit my first battery died so let's hope that this one doesn't die um so yeah um Something that really made me think about how life is so short is I was in Los Angeles and my parents actually came to visit me for a weekend over 4th of July and my mom woke me up in the middle of the night. She was just couldn't sleep and she was just scrolling through her email and she gets these notifications from People Magazine and she said, Taylor, do you, do you know who Cameron Boyce is? And I was like, oh yeah, like he acted on the Disney Channel. He's like pretty big and she was like, yeah, he died and i'm someone i do not do well with death or anything like that and that just really took such a big toll on me it just made me start thinking about so many things um i don't know if it was because i was in la and you know he passed away when he was in la and i just started thinking so much and he was 20 years old so he was so young and you know he lived such an amazing life, but he definitely deserved more time on this planet. So, you know, I think just live life to the fullest. Spend time with your pets. You can't see my dog right here, but you know, spend time with your family, tell people how much they mean to you, you know, buy the concert tickets. Oh, it's <laughs> so cute. Go on the vacation, you know, do everything you can and really do things that are really gonna help you achieve your dreams. I know, you know, my biggest dream is to be an entertainment news host in Los Angeles or New York. And, you know, making YouTube videos is something that I really love doing because, you know, it kind of fuels my passion for, you know, being on camera and everything like that. Um, but I'm a part of a lot of organizations at school that really, you know, are helping me gain experience in the entertainment field. So, you know just spend the money treat yourself i think that it's such a great lesson to be learned because god forbid we could all die tomorrow so live your best life um number two grades do not define you i am someone who throughout middle school i was always super 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 stressed that i wasn't going to get really good grades and i wasn't going to get into boarding school and it just was on my mind 24 7 it was just physically and emotionally draining and i was always so concerned you know if you know i got a 99 i would be so upset that i didn't get 100 even in high school um i went through an eating disorder and i had so much anxiety about everything in my life and when i would get a 99 on a test or something i'd be like what is wrong with me why couldn't i just get that other point and it's like no, there's nothing wrong with me. And 
numbers really don't define you. They have nothing to do with who you are as a person or you know how you treat others or anything, honestly. So I think that it's easy to use grades as something to measure you know, your self-worth and your self-confidence, but it really has nothing to do with it. And to be honest with you, I actually tell people this sometimes and they think I'm crazy, but I tell my parents this too. At the end of every semester um, at school, I never check my grades because one, I already have a pretty good idea of how I did throughout the semester, um, you know, and I think I measure it more so off of the relationships that I made with my teachers and going to see them for extra help or, you know, putting effort into the class because I know that every single class I take, I put in, you know, my best work. So any number that comes out after that is just kind of nothing to me. So to be honest, I don't even look at my grades at the end of the semester. Uh, number three, boys suck. That's pretty much all I have to say. No, but honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys a quick little story time. So I was in LA and I met this guy. I'm not gonna say his name, he's pretty well known. He's an actor, he's been on TV shows that I've watched before. Um, and so I started talking to him and I thought he was really nice at first. I need to take a drink, <laughs> this is coffee. I thought that he was really genuine and really kind and just like funny and just a good personality. But, you know, after talking to him for a little bit, um, it just became very clear <clears throat> what his intentions were. And I didn't see it at first. And all my friends were like, Taylor, this is not a good idea. This is not a good idea. But I was kind of just like, no, it's fine. Like, he, he seems so sweet and funny. So this is where I'm getting to the other part. So he made plans um, to hang out on a Friday. And... He was like, yeah, um, I'll pick you up. I um, am filming on set until 10, but I can pick you up after. And I was like, oh, okay. So he was gonna take me to like a cool view in LA. Um, we had been talking about it for like a couple weeks. So he said he was gonna pick me up. So I literally go out of my way. I go to the dry bar, get my hair done, um, spend like, I don't know, $50 on that. And then I came home and got ready, like did my makeup and everything, never shows up. No, just like never texts me, nothing. So I ended up falling asleep. It was like 1 a.m. I was falling, I fell asleep. And then I didn't see this, but at 3 a.m. he ended up texting me and was like, hey, are you still awake? Uh, obviously I'm not still awake. So I asked him what happened and he said, oh, you know, I got home really late from set and you know, I, I crashed and then I just woke up and then I just texted you and I was like, okay. So he asked me to hang out the next night, which was a Saturday. So he had already told me, he's like, yeah, I live five minutes from you, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, just pick me up in like an hour. So he's like, you want me to pick you up? And I was like, yes. So then he said, yeah, I don't know if I'm coming yet. And I was just like, oh, okay. Like, it's fine. We don't have to hang out. Like, don't worry about it. Just like, you know putting it to the side and he's like, no, no, I, like I really want to hang out. And I was like, okay, so are you coming or are you not coming? Because I don't want to just wait around the entire night like we did yesterday. And in hindsight, yes, I have learned that I should not have given this, him a second chance because wait until I tell you what happens next. So I say, you know, it's fine. He's like, no, I want to come or whatever. So I said, are you really coming? And he said, oh, he's like, just hold on. I'm really sorry. Like I'm trying to help my cousin find something. And I was like, yeah, your excuses are getting really weak. And he's like, no, seriously, like, just give me a chance. Like, just hold on. I'm just like, I'm really busy right now. And it was probably like, I don't know, like 8.30 by this time or so. so. Then he changes the subject and he's like, do you have an Instagram? And I'm like, okay, who doesn't have an Instagram in 2019? Like, seriously. So I was like, yeah, I have an Instagram or whatever. He starts being like really, really sketchy. And then he's like, so like, what are you trying to do tonight? Like, what are your intentions? And I was just like, oh, I just wanted to get to know you and, you know, just like meet up and say hi and stuff. And his intentions were obviously not the same as mine because he never responded to me. So right from there on, I literally just blocked him because I knew the next day he was gonna contact me again and be like, hey, do you wanna hang out? And prior to this, during the week, 
um, you know, before we had plans on Friday and then Saturday, he would be like, hey, do you wanna hang out? And it would be like 11 o'clock at night and I am smart enough to say, no, I'm not hanging out with you that late. And I was like, it's so, so late. Like I have my internship tomorrow. Like I need to get a full night's rest. And he's like, yeah, it's really not that late though. And I'm like, okay, well, I am not a booty call, so get that out of your mind. So yeah, I learned a lot from this. Don't let boys um, take advantage of you and try to make you change your self-worth and think about yourself differently. No, do not wait on boys. If they actually like you, they will tell you that they really like you and they'll show you, you know, they'll show you what you mean to them. And also, just have confidence, like just to be you, because if someone wants to be in a relationship with you ever, it's because they really like the real you and who you are as a person, how you treat others. And I think that's so much more important. And also do not sacrifice your values. Do not sacrifice your values. Um, you know, after this whole thing, I went online and I was doing some research on this kid because he's on TV. So you can just search him in Safari and things come up. Um, and I found out that the reason that his last relationship ended was because his ex-girlfriend, um, you know, they were together for a while and he called her a prude. And I do not want to be with someone who ever refers to a girl that way. So, you know, story is like cut him out of my life, no longer talk to this guy. And I've been doing great. So it's just a good life. Number four. People will try to break you down and take digs at your character through your life, whether you're young or you're old, in professional settings, in, you know, settings at school, whatever it is. And I've just really learned that no one else's opinion really matters except myself. And as long as I make myself proud and my parents proud and my family proud, that's really all that matters to me. There was a situation this past summer where someone was accusing me of something and you know, taking digs at my character and trying to make me feel small and trying to intimidate me. And it did get to me. And then afterwards I just realized, who does this person think they are? They don't know me. They don't know who I am. They don't know where I came from. They don't know anything about my background or who I really am as a person. And they didn't even get to bother to know me. Um, so, you know, I just think that it's better if you have a clear vision of who you are as a person and don't let anyone else's opinions bother you. Okay, number five. I think that a big thing that I've thought about, again, especially this summer, is, you know, everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to live a really great life. And it's really easy to compare yourself to other people, especially on social media. And when you think about it, social media and Instagram and everything is really just a highlight reel of everyone's life. So no one really posts the bad stuff that they go through. You know, someone in their family dies, their parents get divorced, something like that that's going on. You know, they don't feel confident in their skin. Um, they got a bad grade on a test. You know, no one, no one posts about that kind of stuff. So it's easy to look at people's profiles or famous profiles or models or celebrities, whoever it is, and just be like, oh my God, they have the best life ever. And, you know, something that I've also thought about when I lived in LA is that celebrities really don't always have the best life. Um, it can be tough. Uh, they have so many people looking at them 24 seven and it's not always like rainbows and butterflies for them. So just try to think, you know, next time you're on Instagram and you're like, oh my God, this person's life looks so perfect. It is definitely not perfect. No one's life is perfect. We all go through struggles. We all go through the same things. Um, and it's your decision if you want to post those things or not, or talk about them with your friends or family or someone else that you trust. Um, so yeah, just know that Instagram is a highlight reel and you really can't compare your life to it. Number six, <sighs> happiness really comes from within. I think that so much, especially in 2019, people really think that external things can bring them happiness and that is so untrue. You know, I know people who are obsessed with money and they just want to keep making money, 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 and it's going to make them so happy. They can do this, they can do that, they can go here, they can go there. And that really just doesn't solve your problems. It really doesn't. So just know that 
you have the power to control how you feel and how you know your attitude is and how you handle situations it all comes from within and really no external factor can really change that for good so i know i'm guilty of this um times when i'm sad sometimes i will use retail therapy and it really doesn't solve your problems so <laughs> i know that Last summer, I was talking to a guy and he was just being, he just was horrible to me. And I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna go out and buy a bunch of makeup. Not to make myself look prettier, but just because I love makeup. I like love playing around with it and everything. And yeah, it made me feel good for 24 hours. And then after that, I was like, no, I still feel really bad. So it really doesn't help. And you have the power within you to change a situation around and really, you know, make things that are negative and turn them into a positive. Number seven, don't take everything too seriously. I, like I said, when I was younger, when I was in middle school, I thought that everything was the end of the world. I got a bad grade. I was like, finished wasn't gonna get into any schools you know my parents wouldn't hate me all this stuff none of that is true um i'm a very goofy sarcastic person i love to have fun and i can be serious you know in professional settings but i never take things too seriously i always you know let my personality shine through because i'm very um extroverted and very like bubbly and very curious about everything you know going through life can be tough there are so many different stages that we all go through but i think that at the end of the day you just have to laugh at yourself and you know i honestly think it's really funny when things go wrong especially for me i'll give you a little example last so freshman year it was spring break so i was flying to florida to go see my grandmother and my family was meeting me there. They were gonna pick me up from the airport. So I drove to Raleigh Durham Airport, which is an hour away from Elon. And I get there and you know, I'm you know, I going through security, I'm about to check in and uh the guy goes to scan my phone and he and it just does like the little red flashy thing and it makes like a eh noise. So he's like, hmm, didn't work. So I was like, oh maybe just try it again. She tries it again and he looks at it closer and he goes, Hmm, yeah, it says um wrong airport and he's like are you sure like that this is the airport you're supposed to be going out of and i'm like yeah i'm pretty sure like my mom always you know books my flights out of here so long and behold i go into an email that i had and i was supposed to go out of greensboro airport which is an hour and a half from raleigh so yeah i went to the wrong airport and i was obviously gonna miss my flight there so Honestly, people probably thought I was crazy in line. I literally just started laughing at myself so much. I wasn't even stressed. I was just like, I can't believe I did something like this. Like, leave it to me to do something. So uh, I ended up just going to the United counter and just saying like, hi, I know this is really weird, but um, I actually went to the wrong airport, blah, 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 explain the whole situation. She goes online. She's like, oh, can you get on a flight like in 20 minutes? And I was like, yeah, I'm here. Like I can get through security and just go. She hand me, hands me another ticket, like just changes my flight for me so that I could fly out of Raleigh. Everything was solved. So you know what? It's much better just to not take life too seriously, not get into a fuss about things because it's just not worth it to get anxious and angry over something like that. It's not worth it. All right, number eight, you cannot please everyone and you have to be your own person ever since i was younger in middle school i really just loved being independent and you know as much as i loved hanging out with my friends i really value just like me alone time you know i was a people pleaser when i was younger i tried to you know put people before myself and i've just really realized that sometimes you have to put yourself first and it feels so much better to because if you're trying to please people who really don't even have your best interests at heart, that's just hurting yourself in the end. Um, and it's really not selfish to put yourself first um, because you're honestly taking care of yourself and, you know, trying to, you know, give yourself the best opportunity to be happy and to live your best life. And I keep saying that a prelude to something that's coming out i have a special project premiering so living your best life is like a little hint um but yeah you have no time 
to waste on trying to please other people and again like I said, if I make myself proud and you know, I really like the person that I am, that's really all that matters to me. All right, number nine, nine, nine. <laughs> there are going to be times when people in your life who are really close to you, whether that's best friends, family, um, really anyone who's super close to you, there are going to be times when they hurt you and really make you feel super low. Um, I've gone through this a lot, um, especially recently, and it's it's tough, honestly, just to, you know, be hurt by someone who you consider to be, like, your best friend or your sister or whoever, you know, that relationship is with. Um, you know, it's really tough. Um, and, you know, relationships aren't perfect, friendships aren't perfect. There are most certainly ups and downs and it's really easy to take, you know, others actions and to put that on you and think, oh, they did that because I did this. No, that's really not always the reason. It doesn't, it could be the reason It maybe it isn't the reason. It's gonna be tough, it's gonna be hard, but again, as long as you like the person who you are and who you're becoming and, you know, you have your solid values, um, yeah, I think you'll just, it'll be easier to go on as long as you're comfortable with who you are. Okay, number 10. This is also really similar to number nine. Even when you're feeling alone and that you think that there's no one out there who is possibly feeling the way that you do, there's still someone out there who loves you and really cares about your well-being. I know probably the darkest, loneliest time in my life was when I was going through my eating disorder and you know, to this day, I still have times when I feel super alone. Um, if I'm really not feeling confident. The other day, I was out um, at the pool with my family and I just felt so uncomfortable in the swimsuit I was wearing. I just really didn't feel confident and it made me super anxious. And, you know, over the past year, I've really made a lot of progress with my anxiety and you know my worries and that day it just really got to me and you know I'm thinking oh my god like I'm the only person right now who's feeling like this like this is I can't believe that this is happening to me and it's just like no you're not the only one everyone has struggles whether it's you know something different or completely the same as you so just realize and just really think about that there are so many people out there who really love you and who really want the best for you and it's just about coming out of your shell and just realizing it's okay to ask for help it's okay to you know go to your best friend or your mom and get advice or your dad or you know a therapist that's totally okay and i honestly think it's so mature just to go and ask for help or just to vent to someone and it makes you feel so much better okay number 11. <laughs> Perfection is non-existent. I talked about this also in my eating disorder video and I know that I will never be perfect. You know, my life's not perfect. I am most certainly not perfect and I really don't strive for perfection anymore because I know that it just gives me anxiety. Um, that being said though, I do always try to be the best person that I can be. You know, I try to put my best foot forward when it comes to school or, you know, professional settings but to me perfection is just something that can never be achieved and you know it's easy to look at someone else and think oh my god they're so perfect or like their life is perfect like i said before and it's just good to know no one is perfect everyone makes mistakes big or small what's really important is that you just accept yourself for who you are and just really know that who you are on the inside is so much more important than what you look like because um, you know, physical qualities and attributes are so just temporary, you know? Um, so I think if you really base your self-worth off of who you are as a person, you'll be so much happier. Okay, number 12. I'm gonna stop doing the hand thing because it's getting into double digits, so. <laughs> really don't take anything for granted. I have grown up, I am so fortunate. I have such an amazing family. I have a lot of really great friends and it's easy to think about the things that you don't have rather than focusing on the things that you do have. And 
you know, I was fortunate enough, my parents were able to send me to LA this summer with my school and I'm so extremely thankful for that. Again, like I said, it was like the best summer of my life. You know, I've had so many experiences with my family that I just feel so grateful for. And, you know, it's good to recognize not everyone lives the same life. Um, and I know that I'm super fortunate and, you know, I'm really lucky to have the family that I do and live the life that I have. And, you know, never, never take anything for granted because it can all be taken away like that. All right, number 13. Everyone is so beautiful in their own way. And honestly, this is something I was saying before, but true beauty really lies beneath the surface. When I meet someone, I immediately am just drawn to their personality first. I think that meeting new people is great. And I just love, you know, knowing that I can meet people who are so different from me. And for example, one of my best friends, um, we actually knew each other the whole second semester of um, this past year. And she's probably gonna watch this. Hi, Chrissy, I love you. <laughs> um, but basically, um, we knew each other, we were in the same class, and then we ended up being in LA together. We both did our school's program, and we became best friends. Like, she's one of my best, best friends. I love her to death, and we're so different. We literally laugh about it so much. Um, we're so different in so many ways, and I just love her. She's so sweet and such a really great friend um, to lean on, and she's always there for me. And I really, really appreciate that. And I'm so lucky to have her in my life. Um, but you know, it just really makes me think, you know, like she is so unique and beautiful in her own way. And she's so different from everyone else that I know. So I'm like attracted to having a really great friendship with her. You know, I just love meeting new people. And it just really taught me that like, wow, everyone has inner beauty and it's all different but that's like what really matters honestly it doesn't matter what you look like or where you're from or how much money you have that does not matter whatsoever okay this kind of segues into my next lesson so this is number 14 really really great friends that you can trust are so essential in life I can't tell you how many times I've just felt so broken or unconfident or, you know, just lonely. And I have so many great friends that just really, really have the ability just to lift me out of like my worst moments. Chrissy, Carly, Sam, Rachel, Patty, Rose, I freaking love all of you. Um, so many more people, Bray, Lee, so many people that I just literally, even more, I can't name everyone right now, but I literally have so many people that just mean the world to me. And they have made my life so amazing and so great. They can literally, you know, if I'm going through something hard, they can literally just take me out of that and just help me with a new perspective on life. All right, number 15, you're going to make mistakes and that is totally okay. Um, no matter if they're big or small, but I think the most important thing when you make a mistake is just to really learn from it and try to be a better person. And, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and we don't even know that they're mistakes at the time. And I used to get really angry at myself for making a mistake or, you know, anything, anything, whether it's small or big, I would just get really angry at myself and just be disappointed in myself. But then I realized everyone makes mistakes and, you know, the most important thing is to learn from it, become a better person and just try not to make the same mistake again. And, you know, you'll become a much better person because you've gone through that and you've learned from it. Does anyone else when they drink coffee like instantly become more happy? Like I just, I just love coffee. All right, number 16, everything is not what it seems. I know that when I was younger, I would think celebrities were like the end all be all. Like, oh my God. Like I just, I would love to just meet a celebrity. It's so cool. They're literally just normal people. They are literally just normal people. 
uh, same thing goes for, you know, there are a lot of situations that I go into and I'm like, oh God, that's gonna be really tough to achieve or, oh God, I don't know if this is gonna be like a positive thing or whatever, no matter what the situation is. And most of the time it's really not that bad or as hard as you think it's gonna be. So really this can go for anything in life that you're going through. Everything is not always what it seems. Once you get there and you, you know, push your way through it, you realize like, yeah, I achieved this. I can do anything. So just have confidence in yourself. Number 17. Okay, this is a really interesting one. Um, I'm still learning this, but I wanted to include it in the video because I think it's really important. I will admit I'm the type of person I... I'm definitely more of a spender than a saver. Um, <laughs> I'm not lying. That is something that is fully true. I will admit that. Um, I am someone who, you know, it goes different in phases of my life. You know, when I get a paycheck, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I really want to buy whatever it is that I've been wanting to get, whether that's like a piece of clothing or whatever it is. But I really started learning that budgeting is really important. Um, it's interesting because my three siblings all go to the same school or they all went to the same school and they all studied business. And I'm the only one who didn't go to their school. Um, they went to school in Pennsylvania or go to school in Pennsylvania. Some of them are still there. And I go to school in North Carolina and I'm a cinema and television major. I'm completely different than them and they're a lot better at saving and things like that but you know what it's not a it's not a bad thing you know it's not a bad thing but i think it's good to be cautious of it um i've worked a lot of jobs in my life i've worked at justice i've worked in an ice cream shop i've worked at an italian restaurant i've done a few internships so um i know how it feels to make your own money and it feels really really good you know that's something else um, that my parents have always really tried to teach me like it feels so good when you make your own money and you buy something that is like oh my god like I can't believe I just bought this for myself for example I really did work really hard and I actually bought myself um a Louis Vuitton purse that I had been wanting for the longest time um I'd see my you know my grandma has um some really nice handbags and my mom has a Louis Vuitton and I always just thought they were the cool, like the cutest things ever. When I was younger, I would have this is kind of going off topic, but I had a little purse collection that I would get from like Justice or like The Gap or Crew Cuts or whatever. Um, and I just think that bags and backpacks are so fun. So I worked really hard this summer and um, I bought myself um, a handbag and feels so good just to know like oh my god I, I worked so hard for this and you know I did this and yeah like I said it's important to save um so yeah just save a little bit little by little um maybe I'll do another video about it and how I try to save so uh let me know down below if that's something you'd want to see <laughs> maybe I'll get some um advice from my siblings first my brother is really good at saving so Number 18, I know it's really easy, especially for myself, if I go see someone speak at a conference or at school or whatever, I can be swayed sometimes really easily um, by people's opinions, but I think over the years I've gotten really good at really having my own opinions on things and my values, and I think it's important to take others' opinions into account, but at the end of the day, you should be confident in what you think and what you believe and that's totally fine if it's different than other people if it's different from your friends that's totally fine um but i think it just helps you know yourself a little bit more and you know helps you make decisions later in life number 19 this is something i learned a lot this summer um so the ceo of the company that i worked at this past summer something he really instilled in me is that you know you don't always have to work harder it is important to work hard, but sometimes it's more important to work smarter. Um, you might be a little confused, like, what do you what do you think that means? I wasn't really sure how I could do that either, um, but he really opened my eyes and was like, wow, you know, 
there are so many things on social media or YouTube, there are ideas out there. You can borrow ideas from people. You know, you're not stealing ideas. Um, and it's important to, you know, get a wide scope of everything that's out there and, you know, be able to think, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna, you know, figure this out this way because that's gonna take way longer and it's not very smart, but I'm gonna do it this way and it's gonna be faster and it's gonna benefit me you know, so much better. So, you know, just having that perspective, it obviously comes with time. I'm still working on that too. Um, but I think just having that in the back of your mind can be really helpful as you go through life. Number 20, be kind to yourself. That is something that even I struggle with. Um, something that I've learned is that, you know, if you wouldn't say, say you're struggling with your body, you wouldn't say to your best friend, uh, yeah, you've gained a lot of weight. You need to lose weight. So why would you say that to yourself? You know, um, it is really easy to just bag on yourself and just think like, oh my God, I'm like, I don't like this about myself. I don't like this. I'm not happy with this. Why did I do this? But at the end of the day, it's like, try to give yourself a compliment. You know, you only have one life to live. So you might as well like be happy with yourself instead of hating on yourself. Just think about all the things that you really do love about yourself. For me, I've really learned to like the person who I am. Um, you know, I like that I'm a really great friend. I like that I'm kind to people. Um, so I think just thinking about those things that really matter can really change your perspective on yourself and just make you more positive overall. Okay, number 21. This is really one of the most special things that I've learned and it is that there will come a time in your life when you will know what you're meant to do. You'll just feel it in your heart. You'll just know like I was destined to do this. I know it might sound like funny to people, but honestly, there have been so many times throughout, you know, life, especially in college where I'm like, I know that I was meant to do this. You know, I know that for sure that I meant to work in entertainment. I know that I want to be a host and I know that that, is something that I'm gonna do, that I'm gonna achieve. I'm gonna keep working hard. I'm gonna work smarter to get there. My piece of advice to you is just don't ever let that go. When you know what your calling is, what you're supposed to be doing in life, hold on to that as much as you can. And there are gonna be people along the way who are gonna try to break that down and you know, make you feel small and say, oh, you're really not capable of doing that. Yes, you are, you're capable of anything. So just, you know, believe in yourself, have confidence in yourself. And just do you do you that is the biggest advice all right guys so that is the end of my video thank you so much for watching this i really appreciate it um you guys have probably learned some of these things too let me know something in the comments that you've really learned um you know over the years no matter how old you are i think it's really important just to reflect on things and even just you know like write them down like i did in my journal like some things that you've learned just so you can go back and be like hey i remember i went through that experience and it made me feel this way but this is how, you know, I bettered myself because of it. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video and I love you. Bye.